Hello, and welcome to another vlog. I just had the pleasure of speaking to some children about living with a disability. My mother, who is an early childhood educator, asked me to come in and talk to the children about the Hopophone, which is an Easter-themed fundraiser for muscular dystrophy. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I think it's important to talk to our young people about things like this because it's the best way for them to learn and grow. Today's topic is fibromyalgia. I chose this topic because it's a very misunderstood disorder that I'd like to shed some light on. As usual, on Thursday, I'm going to be releasing a video in which I talk more about this week's topic, so subscribe if you want to see that. But today, there's a few things that I want to talk about. First, I want to talk about my friend Dana, who was recently diagnosed with fibromyalgia and has graciously shared her story with us. And I'd also like to debunk some common myths and misconceptions about fibromyalgia. So let's get started. So like I said, my friend Dana was recently diagnosed with fibromyalgia and she's shared that experience with me. And she said that I could read what she wrote to you. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is what Dana says. She says, something that I have noticed a lot while and after being diagnosed was that a lot of people without the condition believe that I can change my illness. I've had people say that I should change what I'm eating, for example, giving up sugar or gluten, exercising more, or just stopping the laziness. While I do agree that diet and exercise are great for fibro and life in general, it's not something that direct directly affects my illness. As for the laziness, I believe that this comes from the fact that a person with chronic pain and other symptoms spends a lot of time lying down and taking it easy as to not initiate or worsen a flare. This misconception that self-care is, in fact, laziness is super destructive and has personally led me to seek out therapy as I have felt guilty for having my condition. I have also been met with a lot of people who believe that fibro isn't an actual diagnosis, but is instead a term that gets stuck to the unexplained. Fibro is made up of a lot of seemingly random symptoms, so many people don't connect them to the nervous system and instead assume that it's just a term used when all else fails. Even doctors were reluctant to diagnose me as having fibro because it was kind of a last resort diagnosis. I saw my family doctor, a gynecologist, a gastroenterologist, many walk-in clinic and ER doctors, and finally a rheumatologist over a span of eight months until I finally got my diagnosis. And over those eight months, I had blood taken and several tests done. It was a long process for what should have been more straightforward of a diagnosis. So thank you, Dana, for sharing that story with us. I think that's very informative. Clearly, what you can see from that is that fibromyalgia is a very complex disorder that's difficult to diagnose, and it's very misunderstood. So because of that, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about fibromyalgia that people throw around, and I'd like to debunk some of those now. So I've chosen what I think are the three most common myths related to fibromyalgia that I'm going to debunk. So the first myth is that fibromyalgia is not a real illness. The fact is fibromyalgia is very much a real illness, um, as you just heard. They are not entirely sure what causes it, but they do have a pretty good idea. And it's also very common. Uh, fibromyalgia affects estimated 2% of the adult population, which is quite high when you think about it. Um, to put that in perspective, that would mean that about 700,000 Canadians would be affected by fibromyalgia. Um, so you can see that it is quite common, and that makes sense because although fibromyalgia is more common in women and people over 30, it can affect anyone at any age. So the second myth is that people with fibromyalgia are lazy, and I think Dana covered this a little bit in what she wrote. Um, and again, this couldn't be any further from the truth. The fact is people with fibromyalgia are not lazy, but they're just trying to take care of themselves. And this is the case with chronic pain in general. Um, you know, it's important for people with fibromyalgia and other conditions to take care of themselves. And sometimes that means taking it easy so that their symptoms don't worsen. That being said, you know, people with fibromyalgia do still have the same roles and responsibilities as everyone else. So having fibromyalgia doesn't mean that they just stop living their lives because they don't but sometimes they do need to take it easy to take care of themselves. And this brings me to the final myth, which is this misconception that fibromyalgia can be cured with diet and exercise. 
Now, we've debunked similar myths to this one in this series in the past, especially when we talked about things like mental illness. Um, just like with mental illness, it is true that diet and exercise may help some people with fibromyalgia manage some of their symptoms, but that's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee that it's going to help everyone. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. And even if it does help manage some of the symptoms of fibromyalgia, it's not going to fix all of them, and it's not the same as a cure. The fact is, the only proven way to treat fibromyalgia is with medication, and the type of medication that's used to treat it varies from person to person depending on what their specific diagnosis and symptoms are. Um, but that's the only proven way to treat fibromyalgia because there is no actual cure for the disorder. It, it lasts uh, for someone's entire life, um, but there are ways to manage the symptoms. And, and things like physiotherapy and occupational therapy and diet and exercise can help, but they're not necessarily going to be that effective. Um, so that's just a brief overview of some of the myths related to fibromyalgia. I'm going to include a link in the description to an article that debunks some more myths relating to the condition. So I encourage everyone to please check that out. Um, if you found this video informative and you enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe to a YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Um, also be sure to share this video so that we can help debunk some more myths about fibromyalgia and chronic pain. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on Thursday.